For today's quiz, we're talking about water pressure. More specifically, the case of the leaking hose. Why is it leaking? We don't know. And just so you know, it looks like it's in really good shape. Looks great. We're gonna try and figure out what's causing the leak. Here's what your quiz looks like today. As always, write down your answers and put your confidence level. The answer that students typically give is, it's the hose. What else could it be? So we don't really get any other answers other than there's something defective about the hose. And they'll come up with a whole bunch of other ideas. But that's it, the hose. To help us solve the mystery of why we have a leaking hose, let's take a look at what a hose is. First off, I want to point out that this is a really durable hose. It's got metal on the outside and rubber on the inside. This is the exact hose on the water heater. Uh, the metal is on here, so any abrasion doesn't make it to uh, the rubber part inside. And if you have crawl spaces and there might be a ch chance that a mouse or some other animal could get in there, they're not going to be able to chew through the metal. But let's go to a simpler hose. Let's just take one that allows water to flow from one place to the other. And that's the goal of the hose to keep the thing that's flowing on the inside. And as long as you don't cut it or break it, it'll stay there. That's what you want. A lot of times we'll use water flowing as a way to understand electricity. But can we work the other way? And the answer of course is yes. In this case, I can look at wire. Now wire, let's just use a basic alligator clip here with wire in between. There's heavy plastic, there's gonna be some metal inside which we can see on these wires. The heavy plastic protects the aluminum or copper that's on the inside. And as long as we don't damage this uh, insulation on the outside, nothing is gonna leak out. In this case, electrons. Electrons are gonna be flowing through wires like water going through a hose. Now, I just wanna point something out. Anytime you have alligator clips, students like to do this. They like to put them onto the insulation. That is a really, really tight uh, alligator clip and the ends are sharp. That can destroy the integrity of that insulation. So don't ever do this. You're putting little holes in there. And if there's a hole in the insulation, electrons can come out. In this case, let's go to a different kind of wire. This is called magnet wire. And magnet wire is gonna be copper and it's just gonna have a paint uh, around it or a shellac or something like that, varnish, whatever you wanna call it. And this is not gonna have the same voltage rating as a, a thick plastic, but it's good enough, especially if you're using coils. And I just wanna point out that um, even though that insulation is rated to um, a couple hundred volts, if I were to put an alligator clip on here like this and then pull it like this, you can see that the copper is exposed. So you have to be careful with these uh, wires and your insulation. Same thing with your hose. Here's why. This is a coil and it has the magnet wire. It's a very thin wire and the insulation isn't as thick. That's okay because we have many, many, many winds and each wind, the voltage difference is not that great. But this is a tunable coil. And if I tune it wrong, all kinds of things can happen. For instance, I can get my voltage higher than I want it. So we have to be careful when we tune these. If not, you might end up, I, I hope you can see there's a little black mark on this coil. Voltage probably went too high and it broke down the insulation and the electrons were jumping from one loop over to the other. That's not something that we want. So how does that help us understand what might have happened with the hose? Here we've got voltage that we're talking about. That is the pressure pushing the electrons. So in our water analogy, we could say, what is the pressure that's pushing our water? And I'm gonna show you how we can measure that. Here's our PSI gauge, pounds per square inch. I simply hook it to my outlet, my valve, I should say, the water valve, and as the pressure builds up, think of there being uh, a spring-loaded seal in here that is gonna end up rotating this caliper. And maybe I can show you on a mock-up. If I had a pipe, and let's say the water is flowing through, let's say this way, and then I could put a ball on top here. As the pressure build up, it would want to push this ball up. 
Now if I were to grab a spring, and I could kind of actuate this, as the ball would go up and down, I could move the spring, and I could get some correspondence with the pressure, the PSI. So you can hook this up and show you. All right, I've got my pressure gauge attached. I'll turn on the faucet and I'm about 50 PSI. When I looked before, it was about 100 and that was our problem. I had replaced the hose and it was leaking again. But once I saw that pressure gauge going to 100, that's when I thought about that coil and the over voltage. And so that gave me the idea of what was wrong. Let me go back and show you the electrical analog of how we control pressure. Every electrical device has a voltage rating. This is a super bright LED and it's incredibly bright. They're wonderful, but it can only handle five volts. I have a 15 volt power supply right here. And if I were to use that 15 volts, this would simply break. The electrons would have too much energy and they would break from one wire inside to the other and it would melt. So I can't use that unless I use something like this. This is called a voltage regulator. So I can connect my 15 volts here and this one happens to be um, a five volt uh, regulator. They often look like this. So if you ever see an electrical device and they've got something that looks like this, it might be your voltage regulator. Essentially it's gonna set my output as five. So it comes in 15 and then it's gonna go out at five. Hopefully you can see that on the meters here. This is 0, 5, 10, 15, 0, 5, 10, 15. When I plug this in, you could see this is at 15 and that's only at five. Now, if I were to take my super bright LED and connect it, now, I really uh, do not wanna connect it to 15 volts because we would just see a terrible flash and uh, my LED would be ruined. But if I were to take this, let me spread that out a little bit, and then I connect to my five volts, I should get a super bright LED that isn't gonna burn out. And it really is super bright. So we use high voltage, take it down to low voltage. If we didn't, bad things would happen. Let's go back to our water supply and see if there's an analogy. So here's where the water comes in from the, the municipality. It's coming in at about, let's just say 120 PSI, so it matches our 120 volts, if we're using the water analogy with the voltage. It's not actually that high. It's probably about 95 or 100. That's an awful lot. In fact, that's way too much for the system. This is going to end up being a pressure regulator. It's going to take that 95 PSI down to, looks like it's rated at about 45. 45 is what you want for residential. So this is going to act just like our voltage regulator in our electrical system. So I'm gonna take this one apart and show you how it works. So after all that, it turns out that my pressure regulator was bad. And that was the problem all along. My pipes were fine, the hose was fine. I just had too much pressure. And if I hadn't thought about my electrical system, I probably would have never figured this out. So in the end, we used our electrical knowledge to bring back to our knowledge of water and pressure, and uh, we were able to solve the problem. Before we go, I'd like to just show how this pre pressure regulator works. I already have it apart. All I have to do is take off the last few screws, and I can explain how this works. And remember, I used that test tube with a spring before, and I did that because I know how these regulators work. If I take the last couple of screws off, like this, first of all, we can see the water is going to come in at high pressure here. It's eventually going to come out here at low pressure. This is a two-stage. I'll just show you what uh, is on this bottom valve. First of all, there's a little screen with a plunger. And so as the water comes in, it's going to end up pushing that plunger up. I have my second plunger, and I'll take this bottom piece off. Take the top part off, and you'll see there's the spring and I can adjust it with this knot. The spring is gonna push down on this rubber diaphragm. As the water comes in and I have lots of pressure, there's a little crevice up here that allows it to have this big area that's gonna press on this piece of rubber diaphragm. When the pressure's too much, it simply closes. 
And when the pressure is relieved, that spring will push down on here and allow water to flow again. And if you were to look in here, you'll see at the bottom, it can open and close like that. The rubber simply went bad on this and that's what happened. My diaphragm was no longer working. I could no longer control the pressure of the water. My pipes had way too much pressure and they started to leak past the seal. So that's your quiz for today.